What's going on guys? Today I'm going to show you how to do an extremely low effort method to be killing living wyverns here in the wilderness. This method gets about 700 kills per hour and if you're on task that gets you about 40 mil per hour GP or about 30 mil maybe like 34 mil or something off task. So it's pretty good GP per hour. It's also extremely low effort like I said and uh, this is definitely the best method to be getting your wyvern crossbow drop and I would highly suggest using this over using the default cave because the default cave is terrible. But um, yeah, hopefully you guys like this method and use it to be getting your wyvern crossbow. So moving on to the preset for this method, uh, it is relatively specific. Before we get into this too much, I do really want to say here uh, at the start, if you don't have what you see here, you might run into problems. So I would really try to get as much of the stuff that you see uh, in this preset section as possible. Otherwise, uh, you might run into some problems. But to start out with the relics, we use Fury of the Small. This is super good to be getting our adrenaline. We also use Conservation of Energy. This seems to be pretty much required. Uh, unfortunately, the requirements are pretty high for this. But uh, we really do want to be getting the Conservation of Energy Relic so we can be getting as many Death Skulls as possible. As you can see, the Zuck Cape is also highlighted. Uh, we are using Death Skulls for the AoE damage here. So because of that, you really do want to be getting as many Death Skull casts as possible. And on top of that, we are using Reflect as well, so you do need the Adrenaline for that. So you do want to be saving as much as possible, and that is why this is so important. Uh, we also use Death Ward. Uh, you can you know, use Persistent Rage or something like that instead, I guess. But uh, I would highly suggest using Death Ward if you're going to be grinding these out or a lot of kills here, because uh, you definitely want to make this as safe as possible. And uh, I find if you don't have Death Ward, your HP can kind of dip and it's just a little bit sketchy sometimes. So uh, definitely keep that in mind if you're going to be mass farming these things. Uh, as for the familiars, you can see I use a Blood Reaver at 10 seconds auto fire rate or a Hellhound. Uh, with both of these, you definitely do need the Prism though, because we do have to be healing these things. Otherwise, they'll just die, which is not super great. So uh, definitely keep that in mind and keep an eye on your familiar HP just to keep it alive. Um, as for the Blood Reaver, I think the Blood Reaver is the best here. Uh, it gives you extra poison damage and these things are poisonable. So that definitely is going to help you out quite a bit. So uh, if you want to spend the money on scrolls, definitely be using the Blood Reaver. But if you're an Iron Man or something like that, you can easily use a Hellhound as well. It's much cheaper to use and it's easier to get these things than Blood Reavers. Um, so yeah, if you're an Iron Man, definitely keep that in mind. Uh, as for the actual gear that we're uh, using, you can see I'm using four pieces of the Death Warden set to uh, boost our HP, as well as give us a little bit more dodge chance on top of darkness. Uh, that definitely seems to help out quite a bit with survivability, but you can also use two pieces of the first Necromancer set, probably the boots and helmet, to be getting a little bit of extra uh, conjure damage as well. That definitely seems to help out quite a bit if you have this, but it's definitely not required. We also use the Cinderbane gloves. Uh, these are poisonable, like I said, so definitely be bringing these to spam poison damage out. As for the ring, you could really use whatever ring you want, but I think the uh, the uh, Reaver's ring is the best. Uh, you could also use the uh, the new ring, the Occultist ring. That one seems to be relatively uh, decent as well. You might want to take like uh, Tusk's Wrath off your bar if you're doing that to spam out a few more Finger of Deaths, but it doesn't really matter that much at the end of the day. As for the weapons, tier 95s are the best here. It, it really doesn't make that big of a difference. Obviously, um, we do want to be getting those five stack Volley of Souls. I do notice that a lot of the times, if you're just fully AFKing, the uh, Volley of Souls gets kind of wasted. So either prioritize like manually casting that or something like that if you're using uh, the tier 95s or just, you know, forget about it and get slightly less kills per hour. But um, the tier 95s are pretty good. Tier 90s should also work perfectly fine as well. Like. I don't really see why you'd act like actually need the tier 95s. But as for the items you do actually need, you can see we have the Zuck Cape highlighted. Um, we are spamming Death Skulls out, so the Zuck Cape is going to save a ton of adrenaline. And uh, you really do want to be uh, getting the Zuck Cape for this method. So definitely go check out my low effort Zuck Cape method if you uh, need to get one of these because it is absolutely required here. Uh, we also are going to need the Amulet of Souls or an EOF, but the Souls is way cheaper, so that's why I use it. Uh, and then for the book, we just use a Book of When. 
This is uh, definitely the best in slot book here. I wouldn't really use anything other than the Wen book. Uh, you might be able to use something like a Guthix book or whatever, but I would just use the Wen book. I mean, it's pretty cheap to use. As for the auras, you can use the Penance aura. You can also use Vampirism as well. Vampirism is pretty good for this method. It's obviously better than Penance, but uh, it does cost more to use because we need to use a powder. But um, yeah, you can use either Penance or Vampirism aura here. Uh, moving on to the inventory, starting out at the top left, you can see the Elder Overload Salve is highlighted. You pretty much need to use a Salve here. The um, Wyverns use Warm Fire, fire for their um, damage, so you definitely need to have protection from that. You need an Overload Salve, or I guess you could use an Overload and like the Warm Fire potion, but that kind of sucks to use, honestly. So uh, I would highly suggest just making a few Salves and using that for this. It's way easier than using the Warm Fire Pot. Uh, and then we just have a weapon poison, a, uh, a few little emergency foods, which we'll uh, get into. And then you can see we do have the cannon highlighted. We do use the dwarf multi cannon here. If you are using this, make sure you're getting the auto loading feature from the artisan workshop. Uh, that definitely is pretty good here. But yeah, we are using a cannon. This uh, item is really, really strong because it can hit the, uh, the wyverns that are far away as well as the ones that are close. So you do want to be using a cannon. Then you can see we do have whatever familiar you're using. Penance Powder if you're using that. Uh, I have the Obelisk thing to be teleporting into the Wilderness. You can also use a uh, the Wilderness Sword if you have the uh, Diaries done. I don't have them on this account, so uh, that's why I'm using this Obelisk instead. But the Wilderness Sword is definitely better, I think. So uh, try to be getting that, I guess. Uh, some Cannonballs, uh, you know, some Rune Pouches for the, uh, the Prism. And then I have Lantadime as well as Quorum Incense Sticks. Uh, you definitely want to be using Lantadime sticks with the selves, and the Quorum sticks are really good as well to just be improving your DPS for a low cost. And then I just have like an Excalibur and the Spring Cleaner to clean up some of the drops. So moving on to the perks I use for this, uh, we can, you can see we are in game here and I just use the standard best in slot perks on my weapons you see here. We have Precise 6, Ruthless 1, and then we have Aftershock 4, Eruptive 2 on our offhand. Uh, I think this is supposed to be inverted, but it doesn't really matter for this account. Um, for this setup, you can also, instead of using Aftershock, you can use something like Ruthless uh, 4 and then Eruptive 3. Uh, that perk is pretty good here as well. Um, you get the full stacks of Ruthless, so it is very strong, uh, but I think Aftershock is just a little bit better. For the armor, you can see we have Biting and Crackling on our gear. You don't need any combo perks. The only thing I'll say about this is you probably should have Crackling and Relentless. Uh, I took it off this piece of gear for Raziel and just never put it back on. So, um, you know, that's why I don't have it, but I think that is probably better. And then for the legs, this is very important. Make sure you have the Absorbative 4 perk. The Absorbative 4 perk is super strong for this method and pretty much every single AFKing method that we do. It just reduces the damage by quite a bit. Uh, I also use Lucky 6 Crystal Shield 1 here as my other perk. Uh, you can use something like Impatient if you want as well, uh, but definitely be trying to get Absorbative. Uh, also, while we're here in War's Retreat, I do like to use the Bonfire here uh, before we start this out just to be boosting our HP a little bit. Uh, as you can see in my gear, I was using two pieces of the first Necromancer set. Um, and if you're doing that, I definitely like to boost your HP. You definitely don't need to be using the first Necromancer robes. Um, you can just use all four pieces of Death Warden, like I said, but two pieces of the first Necromancer robe should be pretty good, especially if it's the helmet and boots. Uh, another thing I like to do is make sure we are 100% Adrenaline. Uh, I do like to start out with, I guess, at least 50%. We do want to be using Reflect before we get into the area, just so when all of them start piling us and we're placing our cannon and stuff, we can reduce the damage as much as we possibly can. And uh, it just makes placing the cannon a little bit safer. So definitely keep that in mind when you're starting this out. Uh, at least get to 50%, but you might as well just get to 100% at that point. So um, yeah, those are the perks we use. And now we will get into the method. All right, guys, so once you're ready to kill these, the living wyverns are located just up here in the frozen plateau. The best way to get to this place is using the teleporter obelisk to level 44, or you can also go to the wilderness agility course with the wilderness sword and then run uh, west here through this little gate. As you can see, uh, those are the best ways to get here. And as you can see, they are right up here in the corner. So like I said, before we start this out, there are a couple of things that we want to do, obviously. We want to turn on our prayers. I am using Soul Split and Sorrow. 
We also want to activate darkness right now. Uh, activate our overload, activate our weapon poison, turn on your ore if you haven't, uh, you know, obviously turn on your god book as well. And uh, apparently it was already on, so uh, we were just wasting charges, but, and then also, uh, you know, summon your familiar here as well. And then I like to have the familiar tab open here just to be keeping an eye on the HP of my familiar. You definitely don't want it to die here, uh, otherwise you can bring a second pouch, I guess. So now that we're ready to start attacking these things, what I like to do before I get into the living wyvern area is pre-conjure all of my guys here and then use the ghost ability just to be getting those out of the way. You know, when we're uh, starting out here, we don't want to be sitting there doing nothing and taking a bunch of damage. And then what we do here is you can see there is this rock slide. We go just northwest of the rock slide to place our cannon down and that will help us uh, It'll make the cannon be able to tag all of these things. If you put it directly west of the rock slide, this rock slide can block the uh, the one that spawns over here by this campfire. So definitely be, uh, you know, making sure you are going just northwest here. And then once we get in range of the wyverns, I like to use reflect here while I'm placing the cannon, which is uh, like I said here. And then you can see we just put the cannon directly northwest of the rock slide. And then we sit here and pretty much AFK them down. And then we will area loot here. So open up the looting interface and uh as you can see uh this is the method that we do here it is pretty much fully afk until you get to about 70 or 75 percent of the uh the freeze timer thing we'll try to get this in a dark area you can see in your debuff bar there is this uh cavern chill debuff that you get once this gets to about 70 percent the wyverns start doing a ton of damage to you so I like to try to keep the uh, enrage thing or the chill timer thing anywhere from like 20 to like 70%. Once we once we get to 70%, I do like to uh, light up a fire and then, uh, you know, obviously be lowering the percentage. If you let it get all the way up to like 80 or 90%, the wyverns start doing so much damage that you do end up having to uh, eat a bunch of food occasionally and it just makes it a lot less safe. As you can see, it is pretty safe here when we are at like lower percentages. So definitely be trying to keep the percentage as low as possible. And then uh, you can obviously be moving kind of towards the cannon, um, but yeah, you are going to have to area loot all this stuff if you want it or just leave it here in the corner if it's bad. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much the method. Uh, one thing to note about this is you can see in the inventory, we do have quite a bit of food here. These guys do drop sharks. You can see one right here. These guys drop enough sharks for you to pretty much fully sustain your food. So you should be able to sit here like theoretically forever if you don't make a mistake and just eat the sharks they drop. As you can see, there's like three of them now in the looting interface. So there's just a ton of food that these guys drop. So you should be able to pretty much fully sustain your HP that way. And uh, as you can see, the HP does occasionally dip here. And uh, you can always just use like an Excalibur or whatever as well to be, uh, you know, lowering the amount of damage or increasing your healing more like. So yeah, that is how this method works. Uh, like I said, I'll let the... Uh, enrage percentage get up to about 70 percent and then we just kind of camp in a bonfire till it's a like 40 or so percent 30 percent or something like that and uh, that should be generally enough for you to be uh, sustaining your hp here uh, like i said keep an eye on your familiar's hp once it gets low or just whenever you know make sure you're casting the prism just to be keeping this thing alive you don't want it to die otherwise uh you know, you're gonna have to telly out or something like that or bring a second pouch. So uh, definitely be keeping an eye on the uh, prisms. Make sure they're either always active or you're activating them when the uh, HP is low on your familiar. Whichever familiar you're using, you do have to use the prism with both of them. So uh, yeah, as you can see, we haven't really had to do anything here. We pretty much just fully AFK and uh, we do get quite a bit of drops here and it is relatively safe. Again, until you're at about 70%. If you do look at the wiki, it does say that um, these guys do take in or they do increase damage to you once they get to about 70% um, of the enrage thing. So definitely be keeping an eye on that and um, making sure you're uh, lowering your chill enrage at about 70%, like I said. With this method, you should be able to get anywhere from like 650 to 700 kills per hour, maybe even more if you're using the gear I'm using exactly and the reaver and stuff like that. So you should be able to get with 700 kills per hour, about 42, 43 million GP on task and about, I would say probably about 34 million GP if you're not on a task. Um, so it's really, really good GP per hour either way. And uh, you also get about 800,000 necromancy XP per hour, which is pretty good. And um, 
This is definitely one of the best ways to do this task. I would highly suggest using this method in the wilderness over the actual dungeon. Uh, the actual dungeon is significantly slower and uh, yeah, obviously we want to be getting as many kills per hour here. And uh, I mean, as you can see, I haven't really had to eat like any food. Uh, most of the food I've eaten is just to uh, clear up my inventory to like loot some of these drops here. Uh, the only thing to really worry about, I guess, is there are like some runes that spawn in the wilderness, which do clog up your inventory occasionally. But for the most part, you should be able to just pick up your drops if you need to pick up some sharks. Yeah, this is a super low effort method to be killing living wyverns. And I would highly suggest doing this if you need your uh, wyvern crossbow drop. Definitely be doing this method because it is so good. Hopefully you guys use this method to get your wyvern crossbow and complete your ultimate slayer log because uh, this is definitely one of the most annoying tasks to be doing uh, out of all of the ultimate slayer grind. So uh, yeah, good luck guys on your wyvern crossbows and hopefully you guys like this method. Thanks for watching guys. Hopefully you guys use this method and like this method. And if you made it this far in the video, definitely drop a like on it. It does help promote the channel quite a bit. And uh, honestly, I kind of want them to add a pet for these creatures because I mean, let's be real. These things look really cool, but I know a lot of people would probably mauled if that happened. But uh, I definitely would like to see a little pet for these guys, especially now that they're a lot easier to kill. But um, yeah, if you made it this far in the video, thanks for watching. And as always, guys, I will see you in the next one.